Now we learned a whole lot about radix based number systems, particularly binary, octal, hexadecimal, and decimal. But so far we've only been talking about the unsigned world. Unsigned being all those numbers that start at zero and continue on in the positive space up into infinity. But what about representing negative numbers or signed numbers, which are to the left of the number line? We know how to do that in decimal. We just write, if we want the number negative 10, we just write negative 10. But how do you represent negative numbers in a computer? So there are multiple ways of doing so in binary, which you will learn about later on this quarter. But I wanted to give you a preview of the most common one used, which is known as two's complement. The first thing to know about representing negative numbers is you are shifting the range of values. So for example, using four bits, what numbers can you represent in the unsigned world? In the unsigned world, you can represent numbers with four bits from zero, four zeros, all the way up to 15, or four ones. This corresponds more generally to the number 0 to 2 to the n minus 1, where n is the number of bits. So, what's the range that you can represent with 5 bits? Well, it would be 0 to 2 to the 5th, which is 32 minus 1, or 31. So for with 5 bits, you'd be able to represent the number 0 to 31. For the signed world, particularly for 2's complement, what numbers would you be able to represent? Well, since we haven't learned it yet, I'm just going to tell you. You can represent the number negative 8 to positive 7. Or, in more general terms, negative 2 to the n minus 1, all the way to 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1. Now, what I'm trying to get at here is that we still can only represent 16 distinct numbers with 4 bits. In the unsigned world, all those 16 numbers are to the right on the number line starting from 0. In the signed world, we're still representing 16 distinct numbers, but what we're doing is just shifting that bubble to the left so that it's virtually centered around 0. So we're representing some numbers signed and some numbers unsigned when we're using 2's complement. So you're probably asking, how in the world is this number a negative 8? So let me explain to you how to use 2's complement. The first thing that you need to note when you're using 2's complement is that if your number starts with a 1, that indicates that it's a negative number. So for example, let's say you have that binary number. If we were talking about unsigned, which we've been working on for a while, so if I say this is unsigned, what is the magnitude of this number? Well, in the unsigned world, we know that this is going to be 1 plus 4 plus 8 plus 32. 32 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1 is equal to 45 in base 10. But this number, if we said this is in 2's complement, what's its magnitude? So the first thing that you do to figure out the magnitude of a 2's complement number is look at the first bit. When a number is represented in 2's complement and the first bit is a 1, that means it's a negative number. So, since we're saying this string of binary bits is in 2's complement, we can't treat it like an unsigned number. We have to treat it as a signed number. So we say, okay, what is the first bit? The first bit is a 1, so we already know this is going to be a negative number. Now to get its positive, or rather its magnitude of the number, you have to do a fancy little trick. The two's complement trick is that you copy down from starting from the right all the numbers until you reach the first one. So since we already reached the first one, we're going to copy down one, and then we're going to invert all the bits. So now we need to figure out the magnitude of this. The magnitude of this is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 16, which is 19. Which means 
that this number right here, 101101, is actually the number negative 19. Now this looks a little weird, but this is how it works. This two's complement trick is something used for just humans. What a computer actually does is it inverts all of the bits and adds one. So for example, we take this number, we invert all the bits, and then we add one to it. And as you'll see, we get the same intermediate step that we did before using the two's complement trick. So let me do another example on the next page. Let's say we have this number. Again, we look to see, is this a signed number or unsigned number? So I'm going to tell you this is a two's complement number which means that we can't treat this as a regular unsigned binary, we need to treat it as a signed number. Oh look, the first bit is a 1, so we already know this is going to be a negative number. We do the 2's complement trick, which is we copy down all the zeros, or all the numbers, until we reach the first one, copy down that first one, and then we start flipping. 0, 1, 0. So now what is this number in decimal? It's going to be 8 plus 32 which is 40. So that means that this number right here is the value of negative 40. What if we had this number? Well, if I tell you this is a 2's complement number, we look at the first bit. The first bit's a 0, which means, okay, I know that this is a positive number. So I'm going to write down that it's a positive number. Now when it's a positive number, you don't need to do the trick. You can just go straight ahead and do your regular binary to decimal conversion on these numbers. So every positive number in two's complement is the same as a positive number in unsigned binary. The magnitude isn't hidden like it is for a negative number. So this number right here, 011010, is going to be a positive 2 plus 8 plus 16, which is 26. This number, 011010, in 2's complement, and also in unsigned, is a positive 26. All positive numbers are the same in all signed and unsigned representations. So that's kind of neat. It's only the negative numbers that are a little tricky. Okay, so you're probably wondering, all right, I see now if I have a binary number, how I can convert it or figure out what its magnitude is, is in, in, in decimal. But what if I did it the other way around? What if I was given a decimal number and wanted to convert it to a two's complement in binary? So let's do that as an example. What if we want to represent the number negative 15? So what you do is you first write down the positive number. So the positive number of negative 15 is going to be 1111. But remember, to make sure that it's positive, we need to add a leading zero. Because otherwise, you might think, oh, since it starts with a 1, it's a negative number. So we're going to write the positive version down and make sure it starts with a zero. Now. We're going to take this number and do the two's complement trick where we copy down all the zeros from the right and the first one. So here we just have the first one. And then we flip all the bits. Ta-da! So this number right here in two's complement is equal to the number negative 15. And we can check it. If we were going the other way around, we see, okay, it's a 1. So it's a negative number, and we do the two's complement on this, where we copy down the first one and flip all the remaining bits, and we see, oh look, the magnitude is 15, so we know this is a negative 15. Let's do one more example. What if we wanted to represent the number negative 35? So we write down the number 35 in positive unsigned binary, so 35 is going to have to be 32 plus 3, or 2 plus 1, so we're going to have 1, 1, 
no 4s, no 8s, no 16s, 132. And again, we need to show that it's positive by having it lead with a 0. So this is going to be my positive 35. Now in order to represent it as a negative 35, we're going to copy down all the zeros till we reach the first one, which we did right away, and flip all the bits. And here we go. This number is negative 35. So remember, what's important is when you're looking at a string of bits, you don't know what those bits are unless you're told what representation you're using. So this is the number 10110, sorry, 10111101 is the number negative 35 if these bits are in the form of 2's complement. However, if I told you this is an unsigned number, then you would just use the regular binary to decimal conversion where this number in unsigned, so I'm going to write here, here that this is 2's complement, and if we were saying this was an unsigned number, where it's going to be uh, 1 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16, no 32 plus 64. And let's add that all up. We're going to have 20, 84, 85 plus 8 is going to be 93. So this is going to be a positive 93. So you're looking at this and you're like, okay, so this means positive 93, but it also means negative 35. And that's correct. It means positive 93 if it's in unsigned binary. However, if it's in 2's complement, then it means negative 35. So bits can mean a whole bunch of different things. You just have to know what language you are speaking. Um, so that's your preview to signed numbers, and like I said, you'll be getting more practice with that later on this quarter.